Hello? Are we really far down? Hi everyone. Marty's going to go as soon as I start speaking, but you can see him briefly at the start of the stream. Go on, say hi Marty, don't leave. He doesn't like you talking when he's come up on you. Hi everyone. Marty, as usual, reluctant to be on screen. There's some chat over my head. You haven't thought about the positioning of that, have you? Uh, go to darkness for a sec. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can see and hear me, and that wasn't just... What if we put it down there? That's all right, isn't it? I don't know how high it's going to go up. I should have to dodge it. Hi, everyone. Things are coming through. Brilliant. Thanks for joining me. Talk about some games that are coming out, eh? Well, they're meant to be coming out. We'll see how... Uh, how good they are, if they manage to come out. As the year goes on. And it's all weird, isn't it? What do you class as a 2023 game? Games that are meant to come out in 2023. Like, things like Inventions, Vital Asserters, Next Big Game. It's probably not going to come out until 2024, is it? But might it come out in 2023? What should it... What should it be in? Hey, Shiffy. Now it's, it's Marty. It's in various poses and various different lightings. Depending on what day you catch him in, he's got quite an orange belly sometimes. Hey, James. Hand pants. Ian. Hey, Jane Cam, how's it going? Steve, Mark. <laughs> I'll have to just, I'll have to keep the purple shirts to match the, I think like it changes depending on where you're watching or something. Oh, the color of the chat box itself changes color. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Marty is placeholding, basically hiding the, the rest of the browser window, which unfortunately is going to flash, isn't it? We don't need to see a cursor, do we? Maybe we do. But yeah, basically, there's there's 10-ish games I've narrowed it down to because there's, there's too many, basically. And I've already kind of cut it down by not discounting because I'm still very keen and excited about loads of games that I've already covered when they were on Kickstarter, like last year, most of them. Uh, but I've kind of exempted them just to talk about 10 other things because otherwise we'd be talking about like top... 50 games or something so they're like there's loads but quick ones i noted from the very beginning like things like legacy of you trailblazer world stitchers arborea that pretty much just got covered like this month fit to print um age of comics flip town there's loads that i haven't written down as well so like an anything that i covered and was pretty keen on last year i'm still pretty keen on coming out this year it's just we'll cut things down yeah, join chat on both platforms to see. We need a third platform for more chat colours. I'm sure there used to be some more. Maybe maybe the code's changed or something. Not by me. Yeah, the cat on the photo of the waiting screen is still Marty. I think there's no way of getting my... Um, my, my microphone will go silent a sec. Yeah, that's still Marty. That's uh, slightly smiley, Marty. Just lazing about and relaxing, Marty. And th this is, you like, can see, we're, we're playing, um, what was it called? R Rise of Queendale? The great big brand's legacy game. When was that? Was that 2018, 2019? So he's a, he's a bit younger and slimmer in that picture as well. So yeah, some, some things are discounted from that, but uh, still, I've gone over 10. Partly because, sectioning things off a little bit, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of things that just through looking at what I was pretty excited about anyway, uh, I came across a couple of games that kind of fit into what I've got to say about a couple of things that I'm most excited about. These kind of fit in as well, that there's a lot of kind of, as, as there is every year, there's a lot of kind of big explory narrative games that like all have their own differences but that's kind of what excites me about them oh i've reset the chat i do apologize uh, but uh yeah so, so there's some of those coming up in their different ways but also 
uh, just just as, as ones to watch that probably, if I'd looked into them sooner, might have been on the top 10 and kind of are because this is that video. But here we go. So Audia, the paths we dare tread, great big open world, not so, like an adventure game. You say exploring, but it's more adventure game. So it's like a, a big hostile world. We'll be having uh, lots of fights and things. It's a resettable. It's not a legacy game. It's a campaign based resettable kind of game. There's uh, there we go. There's some minis. There's some dice chucking, but not like a big uh, dungeon crawly kind of thing. But yeah, I thought that looked cool. And as well, a solo only one uh, called Witchbound. Explore a magical island and become the first witch in over a century. It's got a nice kind of retro... Well, not not so much retro, kind of like... I don't know, like, a, like a, a kind of homage to retro video games. It's not like all 8-bit, but something like maybe Bastion. It's got that kind of lovely palette, that kind of style. So a story-driven adventure with... Uh... <coughs> okay, Rach. Narratives and puzzles and things, and lovely uh, illustrated cutscenes. I thought that looked cool as well. But on to section three is this uh, expansions, kind of expansion. Tanara's Adventures. Wasn't I supposed to? Oh yeah, let let me know the ones that uh, you're excited about as well. Arena the contest. PvP. Oh, there's a campaign mode in a semi-open world. I don't think I've seen Arena the Contest. I'll have to keep an eye on that. I'm not subscribed. I'm not um, logged in in this browser. Oh, there's competitive and a co-op mode. I'll have to look out for that. Yeah, I can't subscribe to things because I'm not logged in uh, in this browser. But yeah, there's there's loads of games already announced for 2023 that are only included 10-ish. So there's plenty of great ones already that I'm missing out. Uh, but I'm sure there's loads that I haven't seen yet as well. And... Like, I did notice as I was kind of getting all of the tabs open and thinking a bit more about it that, like, pretty Kickstarter heavy. Like, so, some things actually only just going on Kickstarter that I just realised after I'd uh, made the list. Uh, some things delivering. Yeah, it's just a lot of great things come from Kickstarter. And a lot of kind of more retail-y things, maybe on the Euro side of things as well, don't really generally get released around Essen time, not all of them, but a big chunk of them. And so a big chunk of those won't get announced until like before Gen Con, like probably around summery time, early summer, something like that. So yeah, there's, there's thousands of games that they're announced every year. But yeah, this is the kind of expansion section, kind of, but I think uh, it's a standalone expansion. But anyway, Imperium's going to have more to it. Uh, it's uh, a standalone new game for Imperium with a load more civilizations, uh, but also you can plug these new civs into your existing two Imperium boxes and make uh, another ridiculous uh, amount of combinations. It had a pretty vast amount already, didn't it, with all of the factions that existed in it uh, to begin with. It's a problem of not being able to... Uh, this browser's in the way of my face, so I can't see when I inevitably fidget about and my face goes off screen. Uh, but yeah, just more and more Imperium. A great... Um, I, I mostly played it solo, apart from when I got thrashed. Did I play it against Paul? I don't think I played it against Paul Grogan. I played it against um, one of the designers, David Tortsey, though, who demolished me, as you might expect, really. It's not that bad to get demolished by one of the designers of the game, is it? But yeah, there's a few playthroughs already for uh, the original two Imperium games. But yeah, there's going to be a, a great big new one with 14 brand new uh, civilizations. Hey, Rachel, how's it going? Septima, Pampero and Voidfall. Definitely, like especially Pampero. Pampero was, uh, was very, very close. It looks so... well... It looks like a cool uh, Euro game too, but it's a beautiful deluxe Ian O'Toole kind of thing as well. Uh, then, also for expansion-y things, Midara, Rach, Midara, mm -hmm. Act 2 is... It's a Kickstarter, isn't it? So you don't know. There could be delays. Who knows? But the enormous uh, expansion for the already enormous Midara is slated, at least on Board Game Geek, to be 2023. Not that, like, there's still a vast amount. We, we've played 
every time we kind of leave a gap we start again but we've done the first chapter which is still i don't know how many hours and uh, days of sessions of madara and uh, yeah we there's still a massive massive amount for us to play and it keeps getting updated and we change things around and then think should we start again we probably shouldn't start again because never can finish it if we keep doing that uh, but yeah it's it's an amazing kind of um rpg inspired dungeon crawler like video gamey final fantasy ish not not so much in all of the look but that kind of feel of the battles and the kind of unlikely band of heroes coming together it's a fantastic game i think my favorite of was it 2019 it came out one of my favorites of that year if not the favorite i can't remember the top 10 now uh, but an absolutely fantastic enormous game i think it got like a bit of wider release last year the base game was at things like uh, the uk games expo so yeah who knows? maybe that'll be the case with this so this is an expansion i think but it's like a whole new massive adventure book uh, at least 40 additional hours of gameplay by expanding the story itself but also giving you loads of optional ways of playing madara and yeah the the playtime i think it's just because you could just keep playing like that's the the i think the playtime for original madara was like that as well oh no it just says 60. <laughs> i think it used to say that because you could just like you could just play it in little chunks little sessions uh, or you could play through the entire thing for ages now would be a good time to insert ads why is youtube saying that what well, while i'm talking it probably means shut up for a minute and show some adverts. We're not going to do that. Got a lot to get through. You met David Towards here and he said there's going to be a lot of stuff for him in 2023. Good. Come on, David. Looking forward to it. Scholars of the... Ooh, maybe that's going to be coming up. Oh, and the Circadians expansions. Yeah, they, they should be in the expansion section, actually. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing with Garfield as well. That Even things that are just about to be on Kickstarter... They deliver very quickly, really, don't they? Hey, Ash. Mikey never played much of Madara 1. Like, percentage-wise, we haven't either, really. I can't remember. Was, were there four chapters in the base game? We've played one of the chapters, which doesn't sound like a great deal, does it? But this is... this is We're talking an enormous chapter book. That's many, many, many scenarios. And there's a ton of story. That's something that, yeah, might not work for everyone, but we really enjoyed that there's sometimes vast chunks of story in between the scenarios and we had the oh, the audiobook kind of version that was really cool as well so we just sat and listened to that between the scenarios oh yeah that we can do that kind of ad yes everything that i make pretty much is uh, thanks to kofi and patreon and your support will be massively appreciated and there's links in the description and in the chat on youtube there isn't on twitch unfortunately but you could see them written underneath me I should sort that out, shouldn't I? There used to be a robot that uh, told everyone, but Steve has had to become its human form because it just do not want to kick in, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, give, give us a thumbs up if you like. Rolling Heights looks really cool. I haven't seen much of Horus. I don't think I've seen anything about it. Hasn't Paul just done a video? I need to watch that. It looks lovely. But yeah, Rolling Heights, like, you like shake up a load of stuff in the box. And it's John D. Claire, isn't it? Okay, I've spoiled one. Am I in the way of the actual covers of the games? Oh, no. The browser disappears when I go back into this. I think my daft ed is covering up the, the covers a little bit. Or why don't you move the browser a little bit, then? Nobody needs to see the scroll bar. So... We're on to the top 10-ish <laughs> that uh, should be coming out this year. And I think this, if you are in certain places in the world, mainly I, th I think if you're in America, this is out. And th things generally, with American publishers especially, it usually takes a few months for them to make their way over here. Fuse Countdown. This is another kind of, it's a standalone game, but... If you've got Fuse, you can combine modules, you can combine things down in various ways to make uh, some great big super game. Fuse 
from way back when now, like 2017 or something. It is a real-time 10 minutes dice game. There are loads of cards to solve. They are bombs that are about to go off. We have got 10 minutes to diffuse this great big stack of them, and we do it through dice. Like we pull dice from a bag, roll them. The cards want particular colors, particular numbers, or this number's got to be bigger than this number. But we've all got to do it in real time and you know, discuss between us who is going to take which die uh, each round before we can draw more out. It's absolutely fantastic game it's still i think although we haven't played it for probably a couple of years now it's one of if not our most played game ever absolutely fantastic at one point uh, which is a few years ago now we'd we'd gotten so good at it we were doing like the hardest difficulty where you have to do absolutely everything the stack and all the cards in front of you and stuff would probably be absolutely awful now if we were to just jump into it in a live stream but yeah absolutely love fuse more of it couldn't be more excited like it's cool that you can like combine it with the old game as well but yeah there's also flatline if you haven't seen that that's like a a bit of a longer like maybe it's like a 45 minute uh board gamey version of fuse like kind of continues the story it's not exactly like uh fuse in gameplay but uh you still doing stuff in real time with um dice on that but yeah fuse countdown so keen on <laughs> yeah the chatbot evolved there were a, there were a lot of um kind of exceptions and rules and things in Madara, weren't there that's kind of that's kind of why we ended up restarting when we came back to it because we thought like well we can refresh ourselves on the story but also we've got to learn all the rules again and things have been updated with this pack and stuff so we could just start again that's what we ended up doing and yeah probably shouldn't but you might end up doing it again when like you come back to it and i think there's like an update 1.2 pack coming out for it now to change a load of things who knows also back to, oh yeah hopla marcus it looks really cool, the new version of that. And Wayfarers in Florence. Yeah, Way Wayfarers should be quite soon, shouldn't it? Because a lot of places are delivering, or have been delivered. Uh, so yes, we've got Fuse Countdown. Next up, oh, I've scrolled down on some of these because I've just been looking through to <laughs> remind myself on them. Mythwind. This is... This is like a... It's, it's a big kind of... I don't want to say like adventure. It is like a big open world cooperative kind of game. The The big kind of draw for this was having different players playing different kinds of, not games necessarily, but mechanisms. So there is, like, I have to be careful not to conflate this with The Gig, which is also one that so nearly got into the top 10. I backed The Gig. It's really cool. It's a roll and write game where we're all playing different um kind of uh, mechanisms in games but one player in Mythwind is doing like action selection I think one player is doing a kind of roll and write kind of thing and you're taking on roles like uh, one is the blacksmith and their game plays like this and you are the other role and your game plays completely differently and one of the things that's like it could be a drawback depending on uh, your point of view uh, but there's not like a kind of win or lose condition like it's as it says it's like an open-ended game that you are just kind of it, it sounds like you're just kind of going out on adventures or not necessarily even going out on them just kind of expanding your story in a way that like probably not in the same way but you know, maybe some similarities to like lands of galzia where there is kind of a point system in that and there is it like it'll change the ending or you can play it competitively if you want to but for us definitely like might as well be no points in it because it's just about being there and um experiencing the story and kind of getting into a little bit of role playing of what your characters might do but yeah the the lovely art and the asymmetric nature in that you are playing these yeah one one person's doing deck building one person doing action selection one person's doing worker placement uh, because uh yeah the, the roles all work very differently next up another one that'll be coming soon well i don't know how soon it's delivering but uh yeah i've, I've, I've got in a group pledge for it and then <laughs> surprised recently that oh oh i haven't paid for this yet it's that much hopefully it's going to be great sleeping gods uh, is back with uh, a standalone 
kind of, yeah, a sequel. It's a sequel there, that's okay to say. Uh, so in terms of kind of exploration and story and stuff, I think a very similar thing, which is great because we loved that uh, in Sleeping Gods. As much as I liked, like probably if you go back to my first impressions, I loved the combat puzzle initially. It did, like with repeated playthroughs, I think with my kind of streams and stuff that I did of it, and we did a session that was, I, th I think we've done two full playthroughs of it as four players, and I've done one when I did it live as two players, so like three full goes through Sleeping Gods. Combat did start to be like, oh, well, I just want to do some exploring now. Yeah, let's, I, I can do this combat. It's, it was getting in the way of the the exploration and the questing, which it wasn't uh, for like playthrough one. Uh, but anyway, saying all that because this um, new sequel uh, includes uh, a, a new spin on combat. So we now build a combat deck uh, and draw different hands from it to fight things. So it's still like nice puzzly combat, but we'll hopefully revamp that, maybe give it a bit more uh, longevity through like more playthroughs because I have I didn't have in any of those playthroughs of Sleeping Gods as well the Dungeons expansion which I don't think is particularly huge but we'll add some stuff to it and like yeah I'm gonna throw that in next time we play it but I'm thinking of like I've seen some variants of like maybe just assume this happens instead of going through the combat maybe we'll do that because I haven't Frostpunk, oh yeah, Frostpunk, I've, I, I want to get that to play through, I, might, I need, that needs to, well, do I need to put it in the vote or should I just make sure that Frostpunk is coming? Because I, I did mean for it to happen in January, just, there's never time, is there? Yeah, okay, ISS Vanguard, and Dead Reckoning looks really cool, I'd really like to play Dead Reckoning, I don't think multiplayer it would be for us, I think multiplayer it seems like there's a bit of um, PvP stuff going on, that's never for us, but... Um, yeah, it's got a solo mode, isn't it? Anything that's got like the card crafting mechanism, I'm interested in giving a go. Picking all the camp, like this is a problem as well. That like I'm, all, I'm always so excited for all of these campaign things and the the time to play through them. I mean, we could cut out every single other game of the year and just be like at Frosthaven, couldn't we? Really. Never mind, like, oh, there's Oathsworn, yeah, there's you know, Trespass, oh, I'm looking forward to getting Sleeping Gods 2, Mythwin, I'm going to play through Sleeping Gods 1 again. Where's all the time for it? A new Sphere Big Box I'm looking forward to because uh, there's, well, there's a, there's a new, like, deck coming out for it, isn't there? But also the, is it the Salmon one? The, the second deck that came out for it, I didn't get in time and now is ridiculous money. So I'm looking forward to like that being more available again. Ark Nova big expansion as well, that'd be cool. Something you mentioned might be coming up. Well, actually it is, it's the next one. So we'll talk about that now. Hey Tim, how's it going? The Search for Lost Species, which I found out actually when I opened this up, that it, it's coming to Kickstarter very soon. I've, you know, get in touch, Renegade. Hey, I, I love deduction things. I loved Search for Planet X. Uh, so this is a, a follow-up to the search for Planet X, an amazing deduction, logic-y kind of game that worked particularly well solo. And uh, so, yeah, this is like reading the designer's thoughts in the forums that this is a kind of more complex version of like it's not just like a reskin of planet x basically it's going to add more things to trip you up in your deductions and rather than looking to the stars and finding all the asteroids and planets and things we're doing like a real world search trying to find these lost species and they're teaming up with an organization that, that's got like hey there's well not that planet x isn't based on you know, pl planets and asteroids and stuff exist don't they but yeah this is uh, bringing it a bit closer to home there's two different maps. There's loads of lost species to find. Eco-friendly production. Cool, right? So I think so. I think this is really soon coming to uh, some kind of crowdfunding thing. Soul Raiders. I'm with you on everything else that you mentioned, Alex. I don't think I've, Soul Raiders doesn't ring a bell. Have I missed out on it? 
mysterious journey full of thrilling adventures and stunning revelation. Well, that sounds like a story-driven cooperative game. I have missed this. Okay. Building cooperative tension. This sounds really cool. I'll have to keep these um, tabs open because I said I'm not logged in on this browser, so I can't uh, subscribe to things. I've missed out on Soul Raiders. Thank you. Oh, don't get me excited for more campaigny things. I already said too many. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Good afternoon. The new version of Ascending Empires. Ascending Empires. Zenith Edition. Epic 4X sci-fi experience. Usually don't end up working for us because of one of the X's. They usually, you know, by design, by their nature, aren't very um, happy with you being ultra peaceful. But who knows? Maybe it will be. I like some of the X's. Hey, Martin, how's it going? That's Fairy and God. Is that one that's coming out? It is. A solo co-op narrative driven adventure board game. That's basically the... You just need to put those phrases in. Like, oh, cool. It's for me. I don't need to know anything about your battle system or how any of it works. Traveling through cities. Highly customizable and unique battle system. Use your wits to talk your way out of sticky situations. That sounds really cool. Like, I like that as well. Of um, When you have... It, it's all cool having all of these... Uh, combat situations, but that's what's cool in something like Lands of Galzir, that there's often different ways around it that you sometimes stumble upon in the middle of a skill check, that it suddenly says, oh, did you roll this? Because by the way, you could try, uh, you've, you've just noticed a secret entrance here. Do you want to try and get in there instead of uh, busting down the door, which you were doing? Like, you know, being able to maybe schmooze your way out of combat rather than uh, going into it. I think Aquarius is an expansion rather than a standalone. Hey, Mr. P. A repeatable solo campaign where Fairly still moves the story along. Oh yeah, I'm pleased with that because uh, I often fail. So it needs to move the story along, really. Or we'll just be there forever. Like certain scenarios in uh, Gloomhaven. Mainly for running out of movement as two players, I think. There's a couple of scenarios where it's just like, oh, got to do this one again, how are we ever going to get through it? Box is £34, campaign with 150 to 300 hours of gameplay, and narration by Forteller. <laughs> it might get to the point where, like, I need an hour limit. Like, for video games, it's just being like, well, like, it's cool that you've got all of this content, but I'm never gonna... I'm never gonna get through it all. Darwin's Journey, I'm really excited for. I've, uh, I late pledged for that, and I think that's, like moving now isn't it it's not uh not too far away unconscious mind sounds like a really cool theme i was going to try and play that at um grid combat we ran out of time distilled looks really cool as well to me yet to play a narrative driven game above and above and below is one so there's there's games like that you know above and below and near and far and that kind of thing where you are playing a game and there is also a narrative kind of happening as well I say, like, usually they don't work as well for me, but I don't know, like, my father's work is that, isn't it? And my father's work I really enjoyed. Games like, say, Sleeping Gods, it's much more on the exploration and story and quest inside of things. There is, you know, gameplay stuff in the... There is puzzly combat to be had. Uh, there is, you know, taking notes and going to the right places and all of that kind of stuff, but it's maybe less on the mechanics the gamey side and more on the story side and like something like lands of galzir is very much on the like it's even more so like weighted on the story rather than the there's some dice rolling and picking your items and things like that and knowing which skills you want to upgrade but you don't really know what they're going to apply to so it's just kind of role playing and experiencing the story more, more than a kind of um you know complex gamey thing Yeah, there's a, there's a few like that, like that that trilogy, Above and Below, Near and Far. I can't remember the other. Is it now or never? Or am I making that up? 
Because we played played above and below and near and far, and being like really like excited, like oh, I want to get into this, but being like it's a kind of like each thing is competing too much for my attention that like i really want to do well at this lovely euro game that's happening so i'm not making decisions based on the the story or i really want to experience this story and this game's getting in the way of it they kind of fight against each other adventures in neverland oh is that still stuck well now i hope that gets sorted out i remember looking at that ages ago hey matt how's it going I was at a convention, so it's like, it's getting there then. What was I talking about? What was the next one? Oh yes, so... What if you put something on a list, and then you know that you're covering it, and it's here now? I'm still anticipating it, I haven't played it yet, because it got delivered about four hours ago, and I've been doing this and editing and stuff. Couldn't be more excited, it's like... Love the West Kingdoms, love the first uh, chapter of the South Tigris, Wayfarers, which like I'd like to do another stream of. I did a return to it, was it last month? And crashed and burned, I was terrible at it. But uh, yeah, I, I need to redeem myself in this. But in the meantime, coming up in just over a month's time, I think the Kickstarter has been announced on the 7th of March now. The next uh, instalment, Scholars of the South Tigris, is coming to Kickstarter. I've got a copy here. And yeah, there's, there's definitely going to be some kind of uh, playthrough, probably live stream, probably close to the time. I'm kind of thinking like, I think I did it with Wayfarers as well, right? It was like a Patreon only stream of me just learning it. I'm thinking like maybe if there's time, I, th there's, there's so many streams this week, I don't think there's going to be time, but maybe next week I do kind of a, like, I learn it as I'm playing and just do that as a, a stream maybe next week. Because, hey, it's it's cool to see things early. But, yeah, we are continuing the story of the South Tigris. So this is very much about, well, we are scholars. Uh, at the top of the board here, we've got all of these translators that, you know, a lot of the West Kingdom South Tigris games, they've got these people that you can just kind of uh, discard for a one-off ability or bring into your fold for, you know, permanent uh, game changing uh, you are trying to get all of these works e that are in various languages you are trying to get them translated to arabic so that you, know, you are scholars so that you can study them that is uh, your language you're trying to get them to a language as close to arabic as possible because trying to get them from you know a language that is very dissimilar is going to be a lot more difficult so you can use these translators to get it closer there is some bag building you've got a bag of dice that you'll draw out and roll them they can be placed on your uh, action boards that i've got a, fo a photo of just the action boards there we go and your your action boards will change with cards uh, that uh, will you know, add actions to it where you that you can uh, place dice on yeah brothers murph have just done like an unboxing stroke overview of uh, what the game's about. There you go, their, their first look. You can click on that on uh, on Board Game Geek. And I'm sure they'll be doing a, a playthrough for it coming up as well. But yeah, more dice, more South Tigris. Really excited. Like you've avo avoided Wayfarers <laughs> with another trilogy. Yeah, that's the trouble. It's going to be a room of Garfell, but you know. If you enjoy them, great, isn't it? Cohen, interested in Master of the, Masters of the Universe, Reckland Run, Europa Universe Alice. Cool. Not. What's Borderlands? It's like a. Have I seen this? It's like a minis. Or is it just a separate game? Is there like some kind of cool mini or not adaptation of Borderlands? Borderland 2 is where, is where it's at though, isn't it? Not where it is now. Hey Andy, how's it going? Oh, don't worry, there's, there's still plenty more games to talk about, Andy. There's, there's been a, it's been quite dice heavy as well. It's been quite narrative adventure heavy and quite uh, dice heavy in uh, various bits as well. Uh, but the next, so yes, Skulls of the South Tigris. You will be seeing this, like, this unusually. I am very much anticipating it, but it is here and that anticipation will be 
realized uh, at some point quite soon. Like say, Weather Machine is a game of 2023. I did cover it for its Kickstarter though. So I was trying to think like, should that be on here? I, I am still anticipating it. It's going to be in the February vote. It's sealed down here. I haven't had time yet. It's going to be dead good, isn't it? You know anything about it? An age contrived. I don't. An age contrived. Secure mortal belief to lead the Eldranic Pantheon into a new age. Fantasy Euro game of engine building and resource programming. That sounds cool. Like, no, I haven't heard about that before now. It looks lovely. Area influence doesn't tend to work as well with it, but I'm aware as well that, like, that's just from looking at a mechanism list that sometimes that isn't even, like, the big part of the game. That's my, like, Essen list. <laughs> like, uh, Shuffling things out, kicking in. I'll watch for that, apart from when I've actually got to get through the the Essen list. Seventh Citadel. I don't know. Like, part of me really does want to give it a go. Part of me was like, I, I didn't really like Seventh Continent very much. Should I give it another go? But, uh, I don't know. Probably not, if any of these start getting played. But, <laughs> who knows? Fifth Blood Rangers, maybe not. Maybe, maybe. Tidal Blades 2. Is Tidal Blades fighting? I've... I feel like I have... brushed past Tidal Blades in the past for some reason, but not too sure. Darkest Doom. I don't know about Darkest Doom. But one of those... Hey, it's definitely on this list. I'm not literally just adding a tab. We'll talk about that one in a minute. Astro Knights. Kind of... Re yeah, we can say re-implementation of the basics of Eon's End. So, deck building. You don't shuffle your deck, you're fighting these bosses and things. But a much more streamlined, potentially quicker experience. This should be, like, this is one that's also, depending on where you are, is fulfilled. I mean, a group pledge for this as well, so this shouldn't be too far away. Yeah, really loved Eon's End, despite my our very live frustrations with the... Second legacy one that we ended up giving up on. Hey, that doesn't take away from all the urns and we did love. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what a uh, kind of yeah, I think I think it's like a I don't want to say smoother, but maybe like a, a, a bit of a lighter re-implementation of it. Hey Rach. Are you off? Making a drink. Okay. But that brings me to I should have looked through the list of things that um, I've backed as well. Hi, Rach. Hi. Because, yes, Freedom 5. I do, at, at various times, uh, in its kind of original run, and more recently with its definitive edition, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse. Not that this has that much in common, like, mechanics-wise. This isn't a... Uh, you know, a, a card game. This is uh, a mini game that is designed by... So Adam and Brady Sadler make, among a load of other things, they do the... I can't remember the, the name of the mechanism now, but like the Brook City... What was the RPG one that we only played at Gridcon a few months ago? With, with you, Rachel. I can't remember the name of it now. They also designed things like Descent stuff. Yeah, Alter Quest, there we go. Alter Quest and Street Masters and Brook City used like a, a similar mechanism for providing loads of variation in their games. Richard Launius designed a ton of things that I have like, I've got Defenders of the Last Stand to give a go. Like, I don't think I've played that many, but one thing above all others, Arkham Horror, the second edition, the edition, I think like, although I think only, only Eldritch has really gotten a load of playthrough coverage and the card game really still feel like it's and, and i haven't even played i've got a load of expansions for it now for the very first time I haven't even played them just keep playing the the base game when i do get it out i think it's still the best one but yeah he's uh, a designer of that they are coming together to make a a, a minis not adventure like a, a, a co-op game set in the sentinels of the multiverse world 
uh, we are doing some co-op strategy on oh that's just that's a picture of the board there's a kind of 3d picture of the board i think this is like is it like in production or about to be in production i can't quite remember what the last um kickstarter update said but yeah uh, there you go that, that's my uh that's my entry for the big load of minis games like i haven't backed a load of those a load of those don't end up my cup of tea unless they're dungeon crawly kind of things of which hey you should see my painted oath sworn bosses well a few of them there's like 20 odd in there and i've painted like four uh yeah I, i'm into the minis but yeah budget and time constraints often dismiss them hey dan you've never seen marty doing anything but sleeping <laughs> it's it well yeah that's it I don't see him doing that much else. I see him eating. You don't want to see that. He inhales food. Usually, there, his camera is like all nicely set up here, but he is not here. But yeah, I'm re really excited for Freedom 5. Let's Go to Japan seems really cool. That's um, it's Josh Wood. And it's like similar to Santa. Is it Santa Monica? I really like Santa Monica. Yeah, Mar Marty's been in the the bedroom. He's at the moment. He's in the Rach is in the kitchen. So he thinks like, and it's getting towards his dinner time, isn't it? So he can be forgiven for thinking that his food's coming. <laughs> he does carry it all. It, well, yeah, in in real or glass form. Marty is uh, Marty's making the big decisions. Hopefully, he'll come back to us though. There's no, there's no way to get him here. Like it was very strange for him today to suddenly be. It's not unusual for him to be creeping about food around this time. But maybe you got the sense that I needed to be sat up and doing this because about five minutes before the stream, he jumped up and wanted to lie on me for a bit. But even like. At any situation, if you start talking while Marty's on you, he's not having that. Straight off. You need to be silent. You need to not move a muscle because yeah, he's, he's gone. How about Earth? Earth seems really cool. Earth was one of the one of the many, really, that... I know I didn't quite get it down to 10, but uh, I tried. I really like the... What's happened there? I think that's just my uh, preview window freezing. Really like the kind of... Uh, there's not a lot to show in. Oh, there's way more pictures than that little preview we're showing. So yeah, tons of cars with various abilities, loads of combos between them. Really nice theme of kind of ecology and being nice to a world and things like that. Being nice with the natural resources and um, expanding the world. Noun the noun. Well, th that's board games really, isn't it? Uh, what else? Oh yeah, so these should probably have gone in the category at the beginning, but I'm really excited for them. Uh, Debris looks really cool as well. That's um, Randy Flynn, Cascadia Designers, next game, right? Hey, I got a name right. I'm always terrified when a name comes up because I'm like, oh, I'm going to get it wrong or forget it. Hey, but I didn't. Well done me. Debris will be, uh, I think it's coming to crowdfunding this year, right? You're getting, uh, you're buying and selling luxurious carpets. Yeah, looking forward to that. Another one that I'm really excited about it. Hey, it can go in the top 10. Mission Control Critical Orbit. This is a uh, roll and write game. So, hey, that's, uh, you might have already decided from that whether you're into it or not. This is a cooperative one, though, that is in real time and we are again asymmetric there are like you're in charge of different systems which what's that game i had it in my head when i was coming up with this list what's the like eight player game where everyone's in charge of a spaceship and you're the captain you're the navigator you're the flight systems and you play it in teams against each other that's the kind of vibes that i got from it it's not quite that because you're not playing against a different team and it's probably not going to be as confusing as when we played that game but um yeah, you're, you're manning different areas of a spaceship and playing, you know, different, not necessarily different kind of games, but we are trying to, in real time, lasagna, you've got it, Captain Sonar, that's the one that I'm thinking, and Martin. 
I haven't played Space Cadets. I think I played a, a spin-off of Space Cadets that was like a, a minis version. What was that? I haven't had that for ages. But yeah, Captain Sonar. That we tried once, ages ago. At a... Was it a convention? It was somewhere. It didn't work for us. But hey, that kind of vibe. But it's a roll and right, And it's fully cooperative. And yeah, still against the clock and all of that stuff. I think that sounds really cool. And another one that admittedly, there's not a lot of information about, but hey, music themed games, I'm into. The art looks beautiful as well. So in this, we are competing classical composers of Asian, it's called. Uh, but another thing that I really liked as well is that you know, you're, you're trying to you know, seek fortune. You're trying to write music in these, for various reasons, you're trying to uh, forge a great big legacy uh, through your works that will stand the test of time. But also like you'll give these performances that you're trying to score these points through, but you can go and visit other uh, players, you can you can attend other players' performances and gain inspiration from those that will help you in your endeavours as well. And like not a ton of information to go off, but I thought that looked really cool as well. And I think it seems like that's coming to Kickstarter at some point soon. Yeah, Kickstarter coming soon, Paige. But there we go. That is. Is there another? Oh no, there's more. There's, there's more still. There's there's more. Uh, then uh, first in flight, that is uh, Matthew O'Malley and Ben Rossett, who are the designers of uh, Search for Planet X, amongst many other things, and uh, Search for Lost Species. This is a pushy look kind of blackjack style of game where you are doing like you know, Wright Brothers early aviation kind of things. Uh, it looks really cool. I watched, it's a few months ago now, wasn't it? It's probably when it was on Kickstarter. Uh, I watched Ricky Royal's solo video of it and it seemed really cool from that as well. Mist, I, I had Mistwind on this list for ages, thinking that, and then when I read the description, I was like, this doesn't sound like the game that I backed, but yeah, it looked it looked really cool. But it's another one that I I just saw today while I was in the process of, well, not today, but like in the last few days when I was supposed to be in the process of cutting down the list. And we had Adrian uh, Amescu and Daryl Andrews will be hearing about actually in the next game. Uh, yeah, it's uh, pick up and deliver with awesome looking minis. Oh, board... Google's got more picks than Board Game Geek. Oh, I love little shit minis. Ricky Roll does make uh, everything seem cool. Like I'd like, I think it would. It I would if I got it. It would only ever be for solo. But he's done the solo mode for the new edition of John Company. I don't know if it generally seems like my kind of game, but yeah, if uh, if Ricky's made a solo mode. I'm into it. Games does Rach anticipate? What do you anticipate, Rach? <laughs> Rach anticipates the games when they end up on the table, pretty much. I think it'd be safe to say New Sleeping Gods? Whole new standalone Sleeping Gods? New Fuse? Let my mom play through. Yeah, Rach, Rach isn't, Rach isn't so much into going back. Sleeping Gods was good, but I think if I was to replay any game, it wouldn't be Sleeping Gods. I think you're just about coming through. There is like a Dungeons expansion for Sleeping Gods that we haven't played now. And I think like when when we've pl when we've replayed Sleeping Gods, we haven't necessarily used the previous playthroughs notes very well. Whereas I think you're supposed to like learn from your previous playthroughs and be more efficient in your new ones well, i think we did remember a lot but we just misremembered a lot yeah so we thought certain things were one way and, and yeah another, ended, ended and up going I a completely different way didn't find that as enjoyable i don't know if it's because we kept misremembering or i don't like it's a bit like seventh continent you know what's going to be coming because you've got a set route so for me not too fussed about that yeah not well, so much in sleeping gods as in just in general, yeah. you don't want to repeat yourself. No. But there's loads of directions we never ended up going in. I think we just unfortunately kept forgetting and repeating things that we did already the first time. What about um, Madara Act 2? I would oh, say, like, excited, but one. yeah, we the, the, only, the only downside of Madara Act 2 is that we nowhere near finished Act 1. But I'm just glad that it exists and is still happening uh what about standalone fuse yeah 
I'm excited. For it's that. just been. I, I'm excited to play Fuse again as well because, like, it's just when when there's like an expansion or a new one, it's an extra incentive to do it because nothing ever faded about Fuse really. We we played it so much. There's like. I think as well. I don't know. I mean, it is a very simple game, but like we could just pick it up right now. And yeah, just, just a ten minute game. And like you don't have to worry about remembering the rules as such because it's just a short light game. Do you want to come on, Rach? Not really, no. No, okay. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> I'm not into top ten. Well, yeah, Rach doesn't. Almost partic- anticipated. Yeah, Ra- Rach. Rach has never done the like looking up of the games and seeing what's coming. Rach just gets the information from don't time have to time. time for that. No, I, I'm I'm looking up the things and curating it to a degree. I'm going and, to creep away. But what about this one, Rach? Oh, hello. There's a couple. Um, there's a couple you might enjoy. But what about? Okay, well, what about Sagrada Artisans? Sagrada, but it's a legacy game now. I don't think there's much more information. Maybe. I don't think there's much more information than when we were just told about it at the expo last year. This is, I think I don't know if it'll release this year. It's coming to Kickstarter. Or has it had preview? Oh, is it been on Kickstarter? Oh, it's been on Kickstarter. That's as much as I know about everything. Uh, but yeah, there's there's coloured pencils. You're colouring in windows. I think I now remember that. Yeah, hopefully that'll uh, release this year. Absolutely loved Sagrada. I love Legacy, but we haven't really played a Legacy game for. A, a good long while, have we? Well, we actually, Aeon's End, Legacy of Greyfold is the last one. Maybe <laughs> killed Legacy for us for a bit. I don't know. Um, but oh, there's there's also like we started My City whenever it came out and just kind of ran out of time. And I think we moved as well not too long after we started it. But I think we were it's gonna, still waiting we were there. Commit to filming every thing and then like make a little series yeah and then we did like the first three and then packed it away for a bit to play other games and then never unpacked it ever again yeah and the ca- the reason you never saw the first two playthroughs that we filmed is the camera was wobbling through the entire thing and ruined it and you can't really go back in a legacy game can you uh what was I talking about well, the other thing which i've accidentally skipped past robomon why does that look like Disney robots? Look at the front. Actually, yeah. I imagine it's uh, that's what it's harkening back to. I'm not saying they But also, robots. does it remind you of anything else, Rach? Pokemon, obviously. Digimon, yeah. obviously. I think that basically, what if the Pokemon RPG was a great big board game? Or what about your thoughts... Madara had a big playtime. What about this? I think we could play this for what's that? Like like twenty odd hours? Something like that? You could play it from five minutes to fifteen hundred minutes. Because like it is one to two players as well, so we can play it um cooperatively. Take on the role of a brand new Robomon trainer exploring the world and attempting to become a fully licensed Robomon Ranger and the greatest trainer on the planet. Explore the book of maps and work your way through the adventure book to complete quests, solve puzzles and defeat gym leaders. Earn enough badges to become a fully licensed Robomon Ranger and win the game. Each session can take five minutes or five hours depending on how long you want to play. How close can you get to Pokemon? I think that's the idea, yeah. Pokemon. Yeah, it's... it's, I, I remember it being on wherever crowdfunding it was i mean like i do love the pokemon i mean and even listen up the, the little tagline is like become the best trainer yeah you gotta get them all oh my gosh yeah it, it it seemed really great at the time i think it was the price just kind of for for games in general i've got to try and limit things everyone has at a certain point but yeah it was uh it was beyond my price range I say at the time, probably still would be if I looked at it now. But in terms of concept, yeah, I'd uh, I'd really go for that. So Grada Legacy was expensive without a lot of replayability. Oh, that's a shame. Has it got like a recharge pack or something like that as well? Stone Saga seems cool as well. Like, yeah, the same publisher as Mythwind. Like, Stars of Acarius, like, I did really want to try. When we were on holiday in America last summer... I was really, really like I almost ordered that from because you could have something ordered to the hotel. You could have packages ordered to the hotel. I so nearly bought that from Amazon or something while we were there, just because like you couldn't get it here and it would have been 
so expensive to import it at the time. I don't know if it's, that's still the case and oh, slipping on the arm of each other. And yeah, I've, I've heard mixed things about it in concept. Hey, great big open world space explorey fighty game. Uh, oh, it's really fun. Space combat, really clever, can do without the story. That's a shame. The, the story bit would probably be what be what I was really excited on. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll try it at some point, but hey, Mist, Mist Wind. No, Mist, Mist Wind is the new thing I've just found out about. Myth Wind is the thing that um, I've backed. Like, I, I think it would be hard to say. I'd like to think that Rach would be keen on Myth Wind, but I could only really explain the synopsis to her until it arrives, really, can't I? I'd like to do a Karyos, though, at some, at some point. So what have, have we said all of the things now? Have I missed any of these? Earthborn Rangers, there we go. Someone mentioned Earthborn Rangers earlier on. Uh, so this is also the Saddlers, as well as uh, many other designers. So this is a kind of... Is it an exploration thing? This, this is a cooperative card game. But the decks that you are kind of crafting, the deck that you're, you're doing deck building, but the deck itself represents the character that you're playing and that yeah re reflects your ranger's interests personal history and personality and then as you explore the open world and your story takes shape you augment your deck with improved equipment refined skills and the memories of your journey Akarios tactical combat was really nice story was okay but not top notch it's an lcg Akarios or earthborn rangers each game session represents a day in the valley and you'll pick up in the same location on the map where you rested the night before. Your goal is to either complete one of your available missions or to explore the open world. The session ends whether you're, when you're forced to rest or you choose to rest for the night. Yeah, this seems really, really cool. Another one that's like looked amazing when it was on uh, Kickstarter, as many of these have been. But yeah, couldn't, uh, couldn't afford it at the time. I'm not saying it was too expensive, just the situation that I was in. Deck construction is similar to Marvel Champions. Oh, cool. As of, like, six or seven months ago, I'm well back into Marvel Champions. Much more than I was the first time around. Sometimes think whether to... There needs to be, like, a disclaimer on the original first impressions. I've changed my mind. But also, there's a lot more game than there was when it very first came out. So we're curious. Like that's that's when I when I first read about Stars of Acarus, that was like its selling point that it's like Gloomhaven in space. We're saying that it's just the modifier decks are similar. Like I think it's Yeah, it, it sounded like even in the most negative things that I saw about it, it was still like this is a great idea and it does some things really well, but some things like was maybe the the exploration and stuff was a bit clunky or something like that. I don't know. I don't want to like moan about a game I haven't played. Just like some things you gotta you gotta draw the line for. There's not even enough time to do the like ten games that get put in the vote every month. Especially when I want to do like fifty this top fifty or whatever it's turned into of twenty twenty three is like ninety percent massive narrative campaign games. I'd like to go back uh, with old things. Like I've had Legacy of Dragonhold for about two years. That I, I never got to play it at, at the time. Got a cheap second-hand copy thinking, oh yeah, we'll get that played. Still, it's, it's by my leg because there's no room for it where it was. Like, oh, I, don't, I, I don't want it to be another one of those games that I have to sell without playing. But yeah, time. But hopefully, we'll, uh, time will exist for all of this stuff. The soonest will be Scholars because that is... Like, as of today, that arrived here and is going to get, I'm hoping, at least a couple of playthroughs in the next month or so. There'll be one, like, probably as the campaign starts or close to it. Uh, and since it's already out in the States, I would hope that Fuse Countdown isn't very far off. Really, really excited about doing that. The others, who knows? Because a lot of them are Kickstarters. Hey, it's, it's still a bit... Um, nebulous well it always is with kickstarts isn't it but especially like with um with lockdowns and um freight shipping and stuff just be be pleased when they do turn up like i don't i don't really follow a load of them that closely and can't remember 
when a load of them say particular dates, I'm just pleased when one suddenly turns up because yeah, there's there's quite a few of those that I've either backed or I mean like group pledges for. So they should be coming. Like Astronite should be fairly soon, shouldn't it? Because that's pretty fulfilled. Right, Andy, you really enjoyed Legacy like, of Dragon Halt. Yeah, I, I really like that because it's it's mainly like it's story, isn't it? I don't know if it's entirely like choose your own adventure. I think there's a bit more uh, to it than that. But yeah, it sounds really cool. Oh, another one that's not anticipating for a new game because I think it's technically released or maybe it isn't. No, let's add another one to it. It's a Kickstarter from last year, but I didn't cover it last year. Uh, Artisans of Splendid Vale. I was just thinking about the Nikki Valens designed Legacy of Dragonhold, right? I'm not making that up. Yes. There we go. Oh, along with other people. Hey. Not to leave anyone off. But this is another kind of... No, not, not similar gameplay-wise to my father's work, but in the sense that it's like a bespoke, you know, not-for-retail Kickstarter-y renegade game. But this is a great big legacy game. All of your characters have got, like, little hardback books that they, like... You're solving puzzles, there's kind of combat and stuff in it, but it seems like a a more pleasant, nice-looking world than you might expect from uh, generally adventure games. It looks really cool for art, and it's got representation and all this kind of stuff. It seems really cool. You will explore the beauty of the Splendent Vale while honing your individual crafts, overcome challenges during tactical action scenes played out on specialised grid maps, and experience individual interludes to build your story separately from the group's tale. Oh, that's pretty... Oh, so is that what's in your little hardback book as well? Like, we all go on a big story together, but then you can have a, a bit of a private interlude that progresses your character. That sounds cool. But yeah, I think that's like... That's either out already. I think if you backed it, it's out, but it's still kind of up for pre-order from places like I don't I don't think I think it's another one like my father's work that shops that backed it might get it but generally I don't think it's um I don't think it's coming out your ending was shocking Andy oh no hey Dustin what's one of the uh what should we convince you get games very much and just convincing myself as well just like I'm supposed to not be buying things. I'm kind of sticking to it, mostly. Mostly. But yeah, see, like, the, these aren't out yet, luckily. I don't have to think about breaking that because they're for future time to panic about. Zoo just sounded like a fun concept. I don't know if it would be for us. Like, there's a Zoo Tycoon board game as well that's coming out. What would you think of a Zoo Tycoon board game, Rach? Like an actual licensed Sue Tycoon game. Can you show me? I thought I probably showed it you when it was on uh, Kickstarter. Rachel loves some Sue Tycoon. Evolution of Rhino Knizia's classic negotiation game, Quo Vardis. Cool. Enhancing a three player game and tailoring the board to all player counts new through neutral, bribable figures. So that's kind of cool, because, like, generally, bribing. Wait a minute. It's still three to seven players then. Yeah, for. Needs to be. Solo or two players, for me. But hey, I like the... I like the concept. Um, yeah, the new deluxe edition of Castles of Burgundy, that's one that I have to kind of... Same with the deluxe um, Castles of Mad King Ludwig. I'd love that, but just for buying some of these other things, I think I've just got to stop myself looking at things and just... Um, concentrate on some of these other bits because yeah it's it's got all like it's it's huge isn't it I, you can see me not being able to spell anything to be fair the microphone is in the way of a lot of these keys it's special edition there's not too many pictures to look at the moment but yeah it's it's like a super deluxe dual layer player boards miniatures for everything i mean yeah, I can see, like, oh, this, this has gone too far this time. But at the same time, I can see. This is really, really cool. Complete redesign of art and layout to ensure that every piece will have great art and enhance in-game usability. Yeah, I think, like, because the, the newer edition came out 
probably a couple of years ago now, didn't it? The like the redesign. And yeah, it's great that that came out and included all the expansions because I haven't even got all the expansions to Old Castle of Burgundy. I've got probably plenty, but there's there's like it's like 10 more than 10 mini expansions for Castle of Burgundy. Yeah, it's cool that you could get it all together. But in terms of the look, I think some things looked a bit better, but some things looked worse. And like, yeah, Castle, Castles of Burgundy's art could... Not so much art, but the colours and stuff could have been better. But we always got along all right with it. So just ended up sticking with uh, the old one for now. But hey, and anyone that makes these games that I'm uh, so excited about, hey, I do playthroughs, get in touch. I'm good sometimes. Search for Lost Species just launched. Well, this is an intentional advertising. Hey, get another one. Like, I know you're already on Kickstarter and you've probably got loads of videos. Hey. Are they are they doing it while drinking tea? I just got access to the Discord. Oh no, the, the Marty picture doesn't stay up. Why don't you stay up? The I'm <laughs> listening back at number 10. Nice. Deep Shelf. Is it a game? I didn't see you come up. It's one of the deepest reaches of the ocean to extract valuable resources. It does solo. It sounds cool. Game of deep sea exploration, exploitation, development and research. Players take on the role of competing corporations seeking to find and develop resource nodes, extract rare earth metals and transport them to the surface and research the unexplored deepest reaches of the oceans. Sounds pretty cool. You'll decide whether to expand quickly and strip mine the ocean of its wealth, or take a more eco-friendly approach. Oh, that's cool. I like the sound of that. I'll have to remember all of these tabs and to subscribe to them on me actual account. But there we go. Marty's picture won't, just won't stay up, will it? Come on, Marty. If real Marty won't be in here. Oh, he is in here! How do we get his... Is that going to work? Oh, look how fuzzy that camera is, all massive. How do I just get him to appear? There's me all big. Come on, Marty Cam. It's because he's in an awkward position. He's much lower than he usually is. Yeah, you can you can see that it's you can see from the extreme fuzziness that it's a live image. That was meant to be a a great camera that was. It struggles being just a cat camera, never mind being a, a playthrough camera. There we go. You can you can kind of see where H is, almost. But there we go. <laughs> we need like a little Marty drone, I think. Yeah, he'd he'd either be out of here or he'd just be batting it around the place. But there we go. That is a look at kind of ten games. Hi, Rach. Hello. Kind of ten games that uh, we're excited about. Well, yeah, yeah. Rach is excited about them as well. Why not? Rach knows about some of them now. Is excited about some. Thrilled. But uh, yeah, hopefully they'll be coming to your way fairly soon, including scholars of the South Tigris. We'll probably, I don't know about, maybe next week. I'd like it to be next week. But this week, there's loads of stuff still coming. There's, what's in the way? Oh, the monitor's in the way, isn't it? I was wondering what this line was in front of the camera. Maybe that's what's messing the focus up. I need to sort that out. But yes, tomorrow, because February's coming on an awkward day. We're not having the recap and stuff on its usual first Tuesday of the month. We're doing it early. And so recap of January. Look forward to February and the playthrough vote that will happen on Patreon straight after the stream. So I'll be here at 5 p.m. again talking about all of the games that did happen. And hey, some of the stuff that's coming up. Spoilers, weather machines coming up. Maybe if it gets voted for. Scholars of the South Tigris is coming up, whether you like it or not. Hopefully you do like it. On Thursday at 4 p.m. GMT, I'll be playing Starship Captains solo. And on Friday at 5 p.m. 
GMT. Rach will be here and we will be resuming having a new game of Lands of Galzir, but with our continuing world. So the things that we have done, the choices that we've made, the war that it feels like we've kind of started will be uh, continuing in episode three, kind of. Like it's not a strict like campaign structure, month but three. yeah, month three, that's what it is. The, the world continues with the choices we've made, the characters keep their items and stuff. Uh, so yes, plenty more coming this week oh, and on, is it on oh on Sunday there's a there's like an introductory playthrough of Heat Pedal to the Metal with just the basic mode because everything I've done so far has been all the advanced stuff. I thought show off how easy it is to introduce people to as well as being cool with all of its advanced things. And on Patreon there will be a paperback adventures playthrough coming up early access that'll be on the channel next week as well. Hey, you can join Patreon and Kofi and stuff. There's links in the description. There's links in the chat at various points. Your support will be massively appreciated. It's how I can do any of this stuff. And uh, thanks everyone for supporting, for watching. Give us a thumbs up and let, let me know if you're watching later as well. What Which games haven't we talked about that you're excited for for 2023? I'm sure there's still plenty, even after looking all those up. Thanks, Steve. There we go. There's some links right in the chat now. Thank you everyone for being here. I'll see you at roughly the same time tomorrow and uh, we'll chat about January and February and stuff, right? Thank you everyone and uh, see you soon. Bye, bye, bye.